Have you ever wondered how triathletes became so fast on the bike? Today we're looking into the history of triathlon and how aerodynamics has revolutionised the cycling section, turning what was once a race of endurance into an aerodynamic battle. Aerodynamics has completely changed how we approach speed in triathlons. We've gone from just trying to finish a race to now focusing on cutting down those crucial minutes. The progress in aerodynamics has been truly revolutionary. In this video, we'll dive into the history of those advancements, explore the key innovations that have transformed the sport and see how they impacted both professional and amateur athletes. Stick around to check out some of the coolest bikes available today and get a glimpse of what might be coming next in aerodynamics. To truly understand how far we've come in aerodynamics within triathlon, let's rewind to where it all began. On the 18th of February 1978, on the sun-soaked shores of Oahu in Hawaii, 15 athletes gathered at the start line of what would become the first ever Ironman triathlon. The event was the brainchild of US Navy Commander John Collins and his wife Judy, as they set out to combine three tough endurance races into one huge challenge a 2.4 mile swim in the choppy waters of the Waikiki beach, a 112 mile bike ride around the rugged terrain of Oahu, and a full 26.2 mile marathon along the coast. These first brave athletes weren't adorned in the sleek aero clothing that we see today. They wore basic swim trunks for the swim, they rode steel framed road bikes taken straight from their commute, and they laced up their hard and uncushioned running shoes. Aerodynamics wasn't even a consideration and even safety helmets were a rarity. There were no wind cheating designs, no aero bars or deep wheels, just heavy machines propelled by sheer determination. In fact, one of the 10 rules stated that the event should be a personal challenge as opposed to a competition. This humble start highlights how much this sport has changed from the pure grit of those early races to the high tech focus on speed and marginal gains that we see today. The athletes in that first event were there to endure, but even in those early days, other sports were already embracing aerodynamics Track cycling and Formula One racing, for example, had begun to understand the importance of reducing drag to increase speed. It wouldn't be long before triathlon followed, setting the stage for the aerodynamic revolution that would change the sport forever. In fact, the men's winning time at the Hawaii Ironman has progressed from 11 hours 46 in 1978 through to 8.28 in 1990, right through to the course record of 7 hours 50 set by Gustav Eden in 2022. Whereas the women's times have progressed from 12 hours 55 through to the course record of 8 hours 24 set in 2023 by Lucy Charles Barkley. It would be almost a decade after that first Ironman that triathletes started to realise that they were losing valuable time during the bike leg. While the swim and run portions were critical, the bike segment offered the greatest opportunity to make up time or lose it. And although tri bars or aero bars were starting to appear on the scene, they weren't widely adopted as being the fastest or most obvious option like they are today. One of the moments that changed that view was in 1989 when Greg LeMond won the final time trial of the Tour de France to take the overall win from his close competitor Laurent Fignon. Fignon even rode with two disc wheels, which is almost unheard of even today outside of the velodrome. Despite this, Fignon chose not to ride with aero bars or an aero helmet, just with his ponytail flapping in the wind. With recent analysis, we now know that the use of aero bars can save approximately one to two seconds per kilometer compared to the traditional drop handlebars. That would have meant a 24 to 49 second saving for that time trial. When you factor in the aero bars and Le Mans aero helmet, you could be looking at a 55 to 78 second time saving over Fignon in that one stage. And as it happened, Le Monde rode 58 seconds faster than Fignon, overcoming a 50 second advantage to win the Tour de France by a mere eight seconds, which was the smallest margin in its 100 year plus history. In one moment, he proved that aerodynamics make a significant difference to race outcomes. Triathlon was one sport which began to see the value in borrowing technology and techniques from other sports, leading to the development of triathlon specific bikes designed with aerodynamics in mind. In the same year, back at the Hawaii Ironman, we also had the famous Iron War, which saw Dave Scott and Mark Allen battling it out in the heat of the Big Island. Dave Scott, already a six-time champion, was known as The Man, and he faced off against Mark Allen, The Grip, who was determined to claim his first victory after lots of near misses. They swam stroke for stroke and cycled together over the gruelling 112-mile bike leg. They did this on metal bike frames with basic clip-on aero bars, standard spoked wheels, and no aerodynamic helmets. As they transitioned to the marathon, the battle really unfolded. They ran side by side, neither giving an inch. 
It wasn't until mile 23 that Allen made his decisive move, pulling ahead to win with a time of 8 hours and 9 minutes and 15 seconds, smashing the course record. Scott finished just 58 seconds later, also beating the previous record. But imagine if they had had access to today's cutting edge technology. Wind tunnel tested bikes with aerodynamic carbon frames, aero helmets, high tech tri suits, and super running shoes. These advancements could have easily saved them up to 15 minutes over the course, bringing both athletes in under eight hours. By the way, if you're inspired by this and you're looking for a triathlon or cycle training guide, I offer budget-friendly training plans with direct coach support to help you reach your goals. Just click the link in the description to learn more. Right, let's look at how we made the leap from heavy steel and aluminium road bikes to the finely tuned aerodynamic machines we see today. As riders wanted to become more aero, it wasn't long before manufacturers started to realise that the traditional road bike was not aero enough. In 1992, Chris Boardman triumphed to Olympic individual pursuit gold at the Barcelona Olympics on a custom-built Lotus Type 108 track bike that is still one of the most aero bikes out there. A year later, he rode the road version of this bike to a Tour de France prologue victory. Other brands soon followed, which created some of the most visually stunning and interesting bikes that we will ever see. But as bike designs became more ambitious, the UCI, who govern cycling, cracked down on rules to ensure that they still look like traditional racing bikes. The time trial bikes of the late 90s and early 2000s looked more bike-like, but they were also starting to be heavily tested in wind tunnels. This created a shift towards aero-optimised bikes like the Cervelo P3. This bike was a game-changer, designed from the ground up to minimise drag and maximise speed. One of the most distinctive features was the rear wheel cutout that enabled the rear wheel to sit tightly in the shadow of the seat tube. It also had teardrop shaped tubing and some internal cable routing, all of which helped to reduce drag for the bike and the rider. As bikes got more aero, athletes and designers realised that they could go further. A sleek bike was only as fast as the rider on it and the environment around it. Companies started to use wind tunnels and computational fluid dynamics, or CFD, to push the limits of what was possible on two wheels. This scientific approach to aerodynamics not only improved bike designs, but also revolutionised the way athletes train and race. Where before the focus would be on training hard and training more, we're now seeing athletes take a wider approach. They'll spend more time and effort on being aero in training, getting into their race position during sessions on Zwift, for example and some will focus on their strength and mobility training around being more flexible and more aero, whilst building strength in that crunched up riding position. As the bikes and the riders became faster, attention turned to other equipment. Helmets, clothing, and even socks created unnecessary drag which could cost vital seconds. Skin suits, bizarre shaped helmets, and long aero socks became the trend for time trials, and they've gradually worked their way into triathlon too. You also have something called pressure drag, which is when air hits the cyclist or their bike and creates swirling currents behind them. These swirls cause a suction effect, which pulls the personal object backwards, making it harder to move forwards. The latest tri suits and aero socks are designed to minimize this pressure drag by altering the airflow around the rider's body. They use textured material patterns to create a thin layer of turbulent airflow close to the skin. By smoothing out this airflow, these garments effectively reduce the suction effect, allowing the cyclist to maintain higher speeds with less effort. Even with the most advanced and aerodynamic equipment, an athlete's performance can be still hindered by poor positioning or inefficient training. We can even notice changes in the positions of professional triathletes. A few years ago, even with aero bike upgrades, you would still see pictures of them with their heads sticking up, creating more drag, and their forearms were parallel to the ground, which opened up their chest. And now athletes tuck their heads down low and bring their hands close to their faces to close the gap and cut through the air. As wind tunnel testing became more accessible and we began to understand the relationship between positions and gear choices with the drag created, it has meant athletes can test and tweak everything to squeeze every marginal gain. The problem then became time and cost, which is why some teams got innovative and created models of their athletes to maximise their time in the wind tunnel. Chris Froome, the professional cyclist, did this in 2016 when he spent all winter in the wind tunnel, or at least his body double did. While aerodynamics have come a long way, there is always room for improvement. The challenge lies in balancing the need for speed with things like comfort, safety and sustainability. Having watched the recent hour record attempts, we can see roughly where the next level of aero will be coming from. 
One area is the rise of 3D printing technology. Brands are already experimenting with components that can be designed and printed uniquely for each athlete. This helps optimise aerodynamics while reducing weight and it speeds up the development process. The clothing we wear is continuously changing too, as faster fabrics and different patterns will help reduce drag. And within long distance triathlon, we're not yet at peak bike. We can see from certain bike brands like Specialized and even smaller brands like KU, spelt KU, Cycles, the move towards really wide fork blades and bike designs that look less like what we're used to. There is one more area of innovation that is primed and ready for a revolution, gear shifting. There is one brand called Classified who have started the move towards removing the front derailleur by creating an internal hub in the rear wheel. This means that you have access to your usual 11 or 12 speed cassette, but then when you need to shift into easier gears for a long climb, there is something hidden in your rear wheel that makes the gearing even easier for you. It's likely that the bigger brands will remain true to the UCI rules, but that does leave a wide open space for a triathlon specific bike manufacturer to create the world's fastest bike for triathlon. Much like ex-pro cyclist Adam Hansen suggested, with his crazy looking prototype back in 2021. As we look to the future, it's clear that aerodynamics will continue to play a critical role in triathlon. Whether it's through new technologies, materials, or training techniques, the pursuit of speed will always drive innovation in the sport. If you like this video, you're sure to love the one on screen right now. Or check out our triathlon cycling tips playlist for expert advice on training, nutrition, and gear. And just so you know, my affordable training plans are trusted by over 25,000 athletes each year, and they include coach support to help you succeed, and the link is in the description below. So don't forget to comment below with your thoughts on the future of aerodynamics in triathlon, and hit the notifications bell and subscribe so that you don't miss my weekly videos.